Okay, I'd like to share a couple possible codes or clues I may have found having to do with Alexander Waugh's theory that Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford, was the natural son of Henry Rosalie, the 3rd Earl of Southampton, and Penelope Rich. But before I get to that, I'm going to refer to the last video, which ended with an idea I had about the year the first folio was published. I'd hypothesized that the year might have a numerical significance pertaining to Edward de Vere and the organization that produced the folio. Often the simplest solutions are the ones hiding in plain sight are the best. In the comments section, Paul Oldman suggested that the year could be added as 1 plus 623, which equals 624, Edward de Vere's supposed date of death and the nativity of St. John the Baptist, the patron saint of Freemasonry. I believe this helps demonstrate that the year was chosen because it connects to de Vere and the group responsible for the folio's publication, Twice Eleven Brethren, Brotherhood of the Golden Rosy Cross, or the Fraternity of the Rosy Cross whatever the name. Thank you, Paul Oldman, for offering the solution. Continuing with 624 as a cipher, a couple videos ago I went over some examples of design in the 1611 King James Bible, like if we turn six pages from the beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, look in the second column, after four verses we find chapter 11, verse 11, twice 11, the passage where Jesus states that, among them that are born of women, there are none greater than John the Baptist. Though this passage is the same in chapter and verse as previous Bibles, it's only in the King James where it appears on the back of the sixth page, second column, after four verses. Again, 624, or June 24th, is the nativity of John the Baptist, and the day that Oxford is said to have died. We also find this number encoded in the sonnet's dedication, which is structured into six, two, and four lines. Also, Edward de Vere's name is comprised of six, two, and four letters, and his title, Earl of Oxford, is the reverse, four, two, and six letters. Please keep this in mind. So after watching the video, Sean O'Donovan posted a comment that he looked in the first folio and using 624 as a key went to the sixth play. Turning to page 2, line 4, 624, the line spoken by the character Benedict, who says, Were you in doubt that you asked her? Looking closer, Sean found that there were 22 or twice 11 words before the line, and it's printed with four-letter T's. Some Oxfordians believe that 4T is a reference to Edward de Vere. The first two words printed on the line are Bened, abbreviation for the character Benedict, followed by were. In previous videos, I've shown several examples where the word were is used as a way to represent de Vere's name, who sometimes signed his name double V. A W is comprised of two letter V's, so were can be read as V-V-E-R-E. -E. Sean saw that before the word were or double V Vere are the letters E-D, Ed V Vere. He posted what he found in the comments, and I went to the folio to check it out. I looked up B-E-N to see if it was an abbreviation for anything, and found out that it's the Latin abbreviation for the word Benedictus, which means blessed. Combined with what Sean found, Ben Ed Were could be an encoded message for Blessed Ed V. Vere or Blessed Edward de Vere. To recap, using 624 as a cipher, this is the sixth play, second page, line 4. After 22 or twice 11 words, there's the abbreviation for Blessed Ed V. Vere in a line with four T's. Now was this intentionally typeset, or did it just occur? You can decide. But I applied the idea of 624 as a cipher to the sonnets, and may have found something regarding the De Vere's and Rosalie. I looked at sonnet 6, line 2, and the fourth word is summer. Recall that midsummer is on 624 or June 24th. It's believed by some scholars that summer is an allusion to Henry Rosalie, who's also Adonis in Shakespeare's poem Venus and Adonis. Printed directly above summer is the word winters. According to the same scholars, winter is Edward de Vere. 
In Sonnet 2, the first mention of winter is printed alongside De Vere's code number 40. This is the first of 17 sonnets that are printed with the De Vere double V character. There's more on this page which I've covered in previous videos. Okay, so using the cipher 624, in Sonnet 6, line 2, the fourth word is summer, a reference to Rosalie. There may be more to this line, in thee thy summer ere thou be distilled, but it's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to explain here. Now the mirrored or right to left reading of 624 is 426. This is reflected in the name Edward de Vere, which is 6-2 and 4 letters, and Earl of Oxford, which is 4-2 and 6 letters. Printed opposite from Sonnet 6 is Sonnet 4. Looking at Sonnet 4, line 2, word 6, the word is legacy, which I'll get into in a moment. Notice that on line 2, the letter V and a pawn lines up with the V and unthrifty printed on the line above. Looking closer at Sonnet 4, line 2, it begins with two Vs, indicating De Vere. After that, there are 22 or twice 11 letters before the sixth word, legacy. The definition of legacy is a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property. It's also synonymous with birthright. But are there any other clues that might tell us something about what this legacy is referring to? Counting the lines of verse, legacy is printed on line 18 from the top and line 17 from the bottom. Alexander Waugh suggested the theory that Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, persuaded Henry Rosely and Penelope Rich to have a child for him so that he would have an heir to bequeath his titles to. That child was Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford. So applying 624 in its reverse 426 as a key, we find that in Sonnet 6, line 2, the fourth word is Summer, or Henry Rosely. And then in Sonnet 4, line 2, the sixth word is legacy. Again, the definition of legacy is a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property, which is on the 18th line of verse from the top of the page and the 17th line of verse from the bottom. Could this be a subtle clue, a way of encoding that Summer or Rosalie's legacy or gift to the 17th Earl of Oxford was Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford? If that seems a bit of a stretch, I have one more item to go over. This is a page from the Catalogue of Honor brought to my attention by Christopher Johnson. Published in 1610, the book chronicles the lines of England's nobility. Now something fascinating about this book is that there are copies where the section listing the progeny of Charles Blunt and Penelope Rich has been physically removed excised from the page. It said that because the children listed were considered illegitimate, it offended some people, so they cut the section out. I got these photos from an article on the internet by Adam G. Hooks, which you can look up to learn more about this. Though this explains why people treated their book in such a terrible way, I believe I may have found something else hidden within the section that might be another reason why some would have wanted it gone. This is the section that's been removed. Thanks again to Chris Johnson for providing it. As you can see, it's talking about Penelope Rich, daughter to Walter Devereux, the Earl of Essex. The first thing that caught my attention was the double V in Walter. It's the only time this character appears on the page. Notice how the name Devereux is hyphenated. The R-E-U-X begins the next line, but look at the letters in italics beneath D-E-V-E. Looking closer, in Greek, Rho, R-H-O, is the letter R. This is a pronunciation of that letter, D-E-V-E-R, Dever or Devere. Now after the two V's, there's the word alter, which means to change, followed by D-E-V-E -E hyphen, and then the pronunciation of the Greek letter Rho. It's telling us to alter or change the letters, and when we do, we get De Vere's name. So why would De Vere's name be hidden within this reference to Penelope Rich? Notice there are a total of 17 lines on the page. 
The 17th line doesn't list a child's name, but instead reads, and another daughter. By printing this and not the name, if you count the number of letters on line 17, there are a total of 18 letters. Notice also that the line doesn't end with a period. I've looked through the catalog and haven't found another example of this occurring. To me, it seems to be a clue, a hint letting the reader know that a mistake's been made and to take a closer look at what's here. Similar to the sonnets and legacy being on lines 17 and 18, is this another hint at the 17th and 18th Earls of Oxford? I know the line reads, and another daughter, which is true. Penelope did have another daughter. And though Henry de Beer was obviously a son, I think that's why the period missing at the end is significant. Again, it's a hint there's been a mistake in this line. The clues they give are that it's on line 17 and it's 18 letters. Edward and Henry de Beer's Earl numbers. So to recap everything, the 624-426 cipher may reveal a message in the sonnets about Edward de Vere, Henry Rosely, and his legacy, Henry de Vere. And if Law's theory is correct and Penelope Rich was the birth mother of Henry de Vere, a similar message may have been encoded in the Catalogue of Honor. I want to thank Paul Oldman for figuring out that if you add the folio year as 1 and 623, you get 624. Man, I can't believe I missed that. I also want to thank Sean O'Donovan for his suggestions and Chris Johnson for the Catalog of Honor. There appears to be a lot in that book. I found a few things and Chris has found quite a bit. Some interesting stuff, which will be in future videos. Thanks for watching.